Hello everyone and welcome to the Kukli Buscraft channel. Okay, so I've just got in from taking the beast for a walk. Udi, come here. A lot of a lot of activity out there at the moment. They're uh, herding reindeer, so we had to go the long way round so as not to disturb anyone. But yeah, lots of snowmobiles, lots of reindeer, lots of dogs running around everywhere. Uh, so it's better to keep this one out of the way. Uh, but yeah, what I'm going to try and do today is I'm going to make a cover for this axe. Uh, so this is a Fiskars collared axe from uh, from round about the 1980s, uh, early 1980s. So one of the first axes to have Fiskars stamped on it, and one of the last finished collared axes. Uh, so I've got a plan uh, to actually recreate some uh, some axe covers for these collared axes uh, from the Winter War period. Uh, I've got one example that's very old and very tatty and I want to copy it, but I'm not doing that today. I'm just going to do a quick cover and I was thinking I was going to make it out of... Uh Got some bits of old boots here. So these are Sorel winter boots. So yeah, Sorel. Uh, these are boots that seem to be quite popular here, uh, but they don't really seem to be very durable. But yeah, I've got a couple of these, and I'm going to see what I can do uh, with this. I was also thinking if I've got a bit of leather left over be nice to make a little neck pouch for this. I've not got all of the materials I need because I'd also like a bit of shot cord. But, uh, yeah, I've probably got some somewhere. I'll have a look around. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw around the axe head. Leave it. What's that? About three quarters of an inch. All the way around, something like that. Okay, so we've got something like that. So the extra three quarters of an inch, 20 mil. Yeah, no, whatever that is, that'll give us room for some stitches and a welt. I'm going to cut that out. So, that'll do for now. And what I was thinking is that as if I can leave one of these little eyelets in, I can attach a piece of shot cord which can uh, go just underneath the pole of the axe. What I've got so far is that. So I'm going to attach a welt, at least on the cutting edge, probably a bit along the top and the bottom. And uh, yeah, So with a bit of shot cord, that should fit over there quite nicely, or maybe some kind of a clip. Uh, I'm not too sure yet. Yeah, it's rather soft leather. But well, once it's got a welt in there, it should be sturdy enough. And I've also still got the little Sorel logo there. Uh, yeah. And maybe, maybe the Sword Peasant, maybe you can make a little pouch out of the tongue. 
Okay, so I'm going to roughly draw around this. I mean, at this point, this doesn't have to be perfect because once it's all glued and stitched or riveted, I think I'm going to put rivets in. Uh, save on sewing. <laughs> also, brass rivets do look quite nice. But yeah, I can trim it up, tidy it up later. Oh, hang on. I'm being a bit stupid. <laughs> if it's going to be a mirror image, it has to be the other way round. Okay, so the welt, I'm going to try and take out of that section there. So, I have got a couple of marks there from the Sharpie where I marked that out wrong. But, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I mean, it doesn't have to be... Uh, 100% perfect and that fits that's actually going to work fairly nicely for the welt is pretty heavy going for these old fish shears. Use the knife for that bit. So anything that's not totally neat and that sticks out a little bit, I can of course trim off later once it's all finished. But we've got something like that. And as if I uh, mark off around the axe. We're saying three quarters of an inch, something like that. Okay, there we are. Let's cut that out. Okay, so I'm going to glue that to there like that then glue that to there put a couple of rivets in hopefully there'll be enough room to actually get the bit of the axe under there and then we can have some kind of fastening mechanism there at the back so yeah I've got some contact adhesive so a bit on either side Leave it to go off a little bit, then uh, stick it on, and then the same again. Then a couple of rivets, then just trim up. Okay, so I've got a load of these little brass rivets. So I'm going to have a little think about where I want to put them. One at the top. One here. One on each corner, and then two more, eyeballing the spacing, absolutely don't care about this being perfect, it's just a bit of old boots, it's supposed to be 
functional rather than pretty. Right, German Army Victorian Ox. I'm going to uh, try and make the holes with that. Okay. That's pretty tight. Let's open that up a bit more. Right there. I should have just drilled these out, it'd have been so much easier. Uh, the first sheath I ever made actually was for the folding saw. And to make the holes for the stitches, I just used a hammer and a nail. And that worked uh, that worked great. Uh, Okay, so get a piece on there. One of these things. Lovely. And then the next one. Okay, so not the most perfect, pretty axe cover. Uh, but you know, it is made by a guy whose normal solution to the problem is to force the axe head into a piece of expanded polystyrene and wrap the outside with duct tape. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm just going to trim the edges up a little bit now. And as for finding something to go around the back, uh, it's really, I mean, that's a really tight fit anyway. I'm not sure that's necessary. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'll just put a bit of paracord in there or something for now. Time to trim that. The knife, by the way, review coming up soon. This is the Manly Patriot, which uh, seems to be quite a good little knife. Been using it for about a week now. Okay, guys, here we've got a temporary solution. So here we've got a barrel knot, you can tighten it up like that, pull the other end, Canadian jam knot will work just the same, then you can take them, take the mask off quite easily. Well, that's all I've got for you today, thank you very much for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll maybe sharpen this up a little bit, work on the uh, sword, sheath, cover, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment, and I'll see you all again soon for another Googly Bushcraft video. Bye for now. Okay, I thought I'd quickly show you this first. So the bit at the back there for uh, passing the paracord or whatever through. That's just that part of the boot. So I've just wrapped the tongue around it bit ugly at the back but never mind there we go and that's how the axe cover turned out in maybe a little bit better light over here